defense would keep the Bengals out of the end zone. And they gave the Saints offense great field position when Les Miller caused Jeff Cleary to fumble and Walsh took advantage, hitting rookie Irv Smith for a nine-yard score. But Walsh would make it close when he threw another interception for a touchdown. Walsh would come through in the end, hitting Eric Martin, who went the distance, 54 yards, and the game-winning touchdown. The Saints beat the Bengals 20 to 13 to finish the year eight and eight. Most players looking forward to next year. Running the 94 in right, though. Can't ask for no more than that. Next year, hey, let's be there. That's all I can say. <laughs> but the question is, how many will be back for next season? All right, welcome to the final Jim Morris Show of the Year. The Saints season is over. As we heard, the team finished 8-8, eight and eight, one of only three teams in the NFL to go the last eight years without a losing season. We'll talk about that and also about the future of the Saints. Also, we'll give away a brand new Dodge Ram 1550 truck. It's beautiful. So to get things going, let's bring out the head coach of the Saints, Jim Moore. Seven years. Seven. Last seven years without a losing season, right, Jim? Right. All right. Eight years ago, we were seven and nine. All right. 86. So it's been eight years, though, since the losing season. Uh, we've had seven seasons since our, our right. losing. Right. All right. The win over the Bengals, Jim, a good way to end the season and start off 1994. You bet. Uh, anytime you can win, it's, it's, uh, it's nice in this business, and especially after the struggle we've had the last couple months, uh, I think uh, it, it just leaves a little bit better taste in our mouth to uh, finish up uh, with a win. Now, looking back on it, Jim, the team started out 5-0, and uh, came home 8-8. Eight and eight. What do you think was the biggest disappointment of the season? You just said it. We, <laughs> we started out 5-0 and oh and ended up 8-8. Eight and eight. That's a disappointment. But, uh, you know, we had such a great start, and then to falter like we did for the last 11 games and only win three out of, uh, out of eight was, was a disappointment. And there was reasons. I mean, it would take us more than the time we have allotted here to go right. into those reasons, but uh, there was reasons. But it did happen. It's reality. And... Uh, um, uh, we just got to find a way to, to do better next year. All right, we'll talk more about that coming up next, though. We'll look back at the Saints-Bengals action and talk more about the future of the team. We'll do that when we come back. Coming up, the coach reveals the turning point and hear the other side's opinion of our New Orleans Saints. Tonight, one of these lucky fans will be driving home in a brand new 1994 Dodge Ram 1550 truck, the vehicle motor trend named Trucks of the Year. It's courtesy of WVUE Channel 8, Saints Digest, and your local Dodge Dealer Association. Yes, a Ram 1500 truck will go at the end of the show. The Saints beat the Bengals through a good defensive effort and a solid offensive performance. The Saints turned the ball over only once as we'll see it, though, it went for a Bengals touchdown. Jim, let's break down the game. First off, the Saints came out and ran the ball effectively in the first half. Well, you know, we'd seen other people uh, running the ball on these guys pretty good. The, uh, the Rams ran it pretty good on them. The Patriots ran it pretty good on them. So we felt like we could, and we wanted to come out and establish the run. We thought it would help our passing game, and we were able to do this. There's a nice run there by, uh, by Dalton. Is that Dalton? Yeah, yeah. Dalton. And... Uh, we, uh, we and, and I think it helped us, helped us win the game, although our stats weren't impressive. You know, it was, it was good. And this is the first field goal by Morton. Right, 43 yards made it 3-0 uh, right. Saints. Now, the Saints' defense would not allow the Bengals to score a touchdown. Got some pressure. Vince Buck gets a sack here. Yeah, we had a little blitz here by, uh, by Vince out of our, our dime package, and uh, he sacked uh, Klingler, and uh, it was a big play for us. Steve Walsh had a solid day. He hits Eric Martin here, goes 18 yards. That set up another field goal. It was 6-3 at the Saints at the half. Steve had some great throws, I mean, right on the money. And I thought he operated uh, really well yesterday, ran the offense good, made good decisions. And this was uh, an example of one, of one of his good throws. All right, now we go to the second half. Uh, the defense got things going in the right direction right off the bat, third quarter. Cling there to Jeff Query, he'll be hit, and he fumbled, and the Saints had it. Well, we felt like it was important to come out and, and establish something early in the second half, you know, and put this game you know, get 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 control of it, and uh, we got a good uh, 
a good hit there by by uh, Les Miller coming back after right. rushing the passer, and then Jimmy Spencer was uh, recovered the ball, and that put us in good field position, and took advantage of it. We took advantage of it and ended up scoring a touchdown. This is a pass play to Irv Smith. It was an excellent call by by Carl Smith, uh, and and we we caught him in, in a good defense, and Irv was wide open, and we got the touchdown. It was 13 to three Saints. Then Saints continue to pressure Klingler. Ricky Jackson gets a sack here. All right, well. You know, Ricky's had a great year again, and, and he's an outstanding pass rusher, one of the best in the business. And I thought he had a heck of a game yesterday, and uh, uh, he had a big play there for us. Now, this happened twice against the Eagles, Jim, and it happened again. Uh, Steve Walsh was intercepted for a touchdown. Well, here. you know, that's not good. Uh, you know, you don't like to give people touchdowns like that. It's just too easy, and it just puts too much pressure on you. But uh, they were in a, in a coverage that uh, had a guy sitting right there in the flat where, where Brad was running his route. And, Steve just kind of misread it, and that was it. Now here's a, a big play later on that put the, you know, gave us the lead again. A big 54-yard touchdown play. Great throw by Steve, and, a, and an excellent, outstanding play by Eric Martin. Yes, he came back after the interception and threw the game-winning score. Right. 20 to 13, the Saints win it, and uh, that brings us to the turning point. Well, I thought that the turning point of the game was that play right there. I mean, it's a 13-13 ball game, and things are tight, and all of a sudden. Wham, we get the 54-yard touchdown play to Eric after a real nice return by Tyrone right. Hughes to get us good field position. And uh, to me, it's 20 to 13, and I started to breathe a little bit easier. Tyrone Hughes will be here later good. as our player guest. Good, he should be. He we'll, deserves it. We'll talk to him soon. Now let's go to the other side, though, and find out what the Bengals had to say about the Saints after the smoke had cleared in this one. I give the Saints credit, uh, Jim Moyer, and, you know, as tough as it's been for them, they um, came out here to compete today, and uh, what's been our Achilles heel defensively all season has been stopping the run, and uh, we knew we had to get that done today, and uh, we weren't able to do it. But usually, you know, when you're playing for the Saints, it's a lot of fire in their eyes. This time, you know, we went out there, it was like they were a little bit lackadaisical. You know, they wasn't ready to come out there and eat everybody for lunch. You know, they were just going through the motions. Something needs to change down here, I believe. You know, you talk to some of their players after the ball game, and there's a little bit of discontent in, uh, in the way certain things are done. Uh, but they're, 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 there's some great talent out there on that field. And, and uh, you know, when they're playing together, they're as tough as anybody in the league. All right, we'll take another break. But on the other side, we'll make our first stop in Gulfport, Mississippi, and the Grand Casino. So stick around for that. When we return, we'll visit fans in the stands as the Jim Morris Show presents Hey Coach. Okay, welcome back to the show. Time now to start taking questions for the coach. And the first round will come from the beautiful Grand Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi, where Jim Gallagher is standing by. Jim, what do you have tonight? Got a lot of Saints fans, as a matter of fact, here, Lionel. They got a lot of questions for head coach Jim Moore, so let's get right to it. Sir, give us your name, where you're from, and what's your question. My name is Bud Russo. I'm from Thibodeau, Louisiana. And coach, I'd like to know, as if you're concerned by staying pat with your coaching staff, will it adversely affect ticket sales next year? I, I don't I don't know I, I don't uh, I hope not because I think I've got a great coaching staff and uh, they do an outstanding job and uh, I would hope that people would realize that second question for the coach sir what's your name and what's your question hi coach Aaron Danos from cutoff uh, I'm wondering if uh, the way things have gone now if we have a chance to uh, maybe trade off uh, some of our veteran players for draft picks and possibly draft in younger players to build a team much like Dallas did or did the free agency market take that away from us well, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a little difficult to trade nowadays. Uh, uh, and it's going to be a whole new ball game with the, with, the, with the salary cap coming into effect this year and the second year of free agency. And I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see how people approach this. But, uh, you know, even, even if we did want to trade somebody, you, you just don't go out and trade somebody because maybe somebody didn't have any interest in, in somebody you want to trade. And maybe sometimes people say, well, let's trade and get somebody else. Well, if the guy's good enough, somebody doesn't want to give him up. So it's not always as easy to, to negotiate or, 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 or do a trade as, as some people might think. Well, that's it right now from the Grand Casino, Lionel and Jim. But we're going to come back. More questions for the coach coming your way. So stay with us. We'll be back with more from the Grand a little later in the show. All right, Jim. We'll see you then. Now let's hear what some of the fans had to say at the game on Sunday. This segment is entitled, Hey Coach. Let's get to our first fan question now. Hey, Coach, are you worried about Ricky Jackson leaving the Saints? 
I think Ricky will be back with the Saints. I, I, I believe that the, the New Orleans Saints is the best place for Ricky to be. We'd like to have him back, and I think that he'd like to be back with the Saints. So if he wants to continue to play football, which I hope that he does, I, I, I just believe that the best uh, situation for everybody, including Ricky, is with the New Orleans Saints. But do you believe his comments, Jim, where he says that uh, he's played his last game and he doesn't want to come back to the Saints anymore? Well, I don't, I don't know. I didn't see those comments. I didn't read the paper, so I didn't see those comments. He has not expressed that to me. Okay. Have you talked to him uh, since the season has ended? I have not. I did not talk to him today. I All mean, right. I said hello to him and right. things like that, but I didn't sit down and have a conversation with him. All right. Uh, let's hear another question from a fan at the Dome. Hey, Coach, um, what are you going to do about this quarterback situation? Well, we're going to uh, make it better either with the players that we got, but probably that way, and, uh, and get better production out of it uh, for 1994. Let's get one more question on Hey Coach. Hey Coach, are you involved with the play calling during the game? Yes, I'm aware of every play that's called offensively, defensively, and in the kicking game. All right, and one feature we had on this uh, Jim Moore show was the coach's handbook, where Jim's assistant coaches gave us some insight to the game of football. On this last coach's handbook, Brian Grenrud talks with defensive line coach John Pease. Joining us this week on Coach's Handbook is defensive line coach John Pease to talk about stunts. And coach, you guys run three main stunts, is that correct? Right. Uh, we've used three things since we've been here. Now we give a variety of alignments to try to confuse the opponent, so it gives them a little different look every week. But the way we call these stunts, we call them exit stunt, our tech stunt, or twist stunt. We try to make it pretty self-explanatory so in the noise of the dome it's pretty easy to hear. So if I call exit, the first guy through on the stunt will be the E, and the second guy through will be the T, the end first, who's going inside, and then the tackle would delay and come around and contain the quarterback. And we could run that on one side or run the exit stunt on both sides of a play. And all we're basically doing is exchanging lane, pass rush lanes. On a tech stunt, we try to use the same format. The T for tackle going first, then the E for the end going second. So in this situation, the tackle would go first, and if it was Ricky on this side, he would start off and come up underneath. Same thing would happen over here. A tackle would go first, and Ronaldo or Joel would come back underneath. And again, we have four rush lanes distributed a little bit differently. And the last one we use is what we call a twist stunt, TT. And that's obviously the two tackles. And we do this off a of location of the quarterback or the back if the quarterback's in the shotgun. If the back is offset, we may run back twist. The man to the side of the back would go first, and the other tackle would delay and come around the ends would just have normal contain. And those are the four, three main ones we do. Now, we could always run the same stunt, but now we just move our tackle over a little bit, like this. Now, from a whole different alignment, we run the same stunt. Exit, the end would come down, tackle would come all the way from here, all the way around. So those are the three that we may use, and as I said, we mix up the alignments and try to give us a little uh, advantage in our rush. Great, Coach. Thank okay, you so much. Up. And for the Coach's Handbook, I'm Brian Grenrud. All right, time for another break, but there's still a lot more to come, including a visit with rookie All-Pro kick returner Tyrone Hughes. He'll be here next, so come on back. Coming up next on the Jim Mora Show. We'll introduce you to a group of people who have made Saints games a family affair. They're next. Well, as we know by now, three Saints were elected to the Pro Bowl this year. Linebackers Ricky Jackson and Ronaldo Turnbull and a rookie from Nebraska by way of St. Augustine High School here in New Orleans. He is punt and kick returner Tyrone Hughes and he joins us here tonight. Let's welcome to the show. Tyrone Hughes. A lot of people with red on out there, Tyrone. I guess they knew you were coming since you're from Nebraska over here. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> They're looking for that truck. That's right. <laughs> They're, they're gonna win the, somebody's going to win the That's truck. Right. You're right. Tyrone, you completed your first NFL season. Looking back on it, uh, was it what you expected coming into training camp? 
Uh, not really. I mean, I was just out, hope, hopefully, just to make the team. And uh, I knew I can contribute and be an impact player as far as being a kick returner and punt returner. But, uh, I mean, the way this whole season turned out has been a dream come true. Yeah, it had a sweet ending for you personally. The Saints didn't make the playoffs, but you uh, elected to the Pro Bowl. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm very excited about that surprise, but I'm very excited. Let's look at your touchdowns this year, Tyrone. Uh, it all started in the first preseason game in Tokyo, your first opportunity in a Saints uniform. You took one back against the Eagles for a touchdown. Tell me about this. Were you just thrilled to death about this one? Uh, I was very excited. I mean, after coming from Nebraska uh, back in December, uh, we had just been to Tokyo and then having to go back there in July, uh, you know, it was, it was the trip I wasn't too thrilled about, but uh, I had a punt return there for about 79 yards, and uh, that one was exciting, the first one there in my pro career. Right, then this one came against the Rams. It was a big play in the game. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was a big play, but at the time we had the Rams beat, and, uh, you know, we were 5-0 and at the time, so everybody was pretty happy and rolling. Against the Vikings, score tied. You brought back a kickoff for a score that turned the game in the Saints' favor. Uh, that was just some excellent blocking by the guys. And I, I mean, I set it up, but they did an excellent job of blocking. And uh, Key Taylor was the one who suggested that, that certain return. And then last week against the Eagles, you popped another one, 83 yards. This one may have been the one that made you the All-Pro. Uh, no, not really, because the uh, <laughs> Pro Bowl balling had already been in. Well. Uh, I think this one here probably was uh, a little cockiness on my part. I probably should have caught the ball because when I looked at the film again, Herschel Walker was actually standing right behind me yeah. uh, when I caught the ball, but I was just trying to make something happen. Tyrone, what is your opinion on uh, what happened to the team after the 5-0 and start, uh, finishing 3-8 and and missing the playoffs? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I really can't say. I just think as the season went on, we found out that, you know, it's just basically execution you know, offensively and defensively. And uh, uh, we went in prepared and worked hard throughout the weeks and uh, as far as practice were concerned. But during the game, I don't think we just exe we executed at all. Now, most NFL players do not play in their hometowns, but you are playing right here in the city you grew up in, played high school football in. Uh, what's the reaction you got from family and friends this season? Uh, I mean, they were thrilled just to be able to see me play. You know, being at Nebraska, a lot of my friends and family didn't get to see me play uh, most of the games my, my father and my sister were at uh, this year, and uh, I was just happy to be back home, and they were too. Tony, what do you think it'll take to get the team back to the playoffs next year? Do you need a lot of changes or a few? What do you think? I don't think we need any changes. I think we just need some guys who uh, want to be out there to play hard every game, every down. Uh, some guys who are willing to execute. Uh, I mean, we have the talent out there. They just, we just have to get out there and do, it, do the job. All right, we'll do more with you in a few minutes, Tyrone. For being our player guest tonight, you receive a gift certificate from Oakland Heart Jewelers on Metairie Road. Time now to show you our snapshot. Jim Gallagher looks at another of the Saints support staff, one of the guys behind the scenes that makes things happen. Jay Romig started with the Saints back in 1977. At the time, it was supposed to be a two-week deal. Well, six head coaches later, and Jay is now the team's data processing manager. And this is my 17th season with the team. I started out as a trainer, assistant trainer to uh, Dean Kleinsmith, did that for three years, and then moved into the business office after that, and have worked with uh, computers, uh, training camp coordinator, and, uh, and, you know, on a day like today, stadium operations manager. So there's, uh, but it's been fun. Sundays, Jay is in charge of the game day operations for the Saints. Who were the sideline passes for? Which ones? The ones that uh, the, the guy had. We gave what him out? The, yeah, oh, but, uh, it was a guy and two kids, and then they had another one. Um, some guy was supposed to be running 50 or something like that. Anybody with a television pass not working has to get off. I know, because we okay. get fined. Yeah. That's what I told him. Okay. And, uh, I had Louie bring him back outside. I mean, we didn't kick him out. We just sent him out. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Angelo, can you get me that? Uh, as soon as you get the attendance today, would you give it to me as soon as you can? Thank you. I got to grab some Gatorade. I'm dying of thirst down here. But we're the tenant here in the building for today, and we're just sort of responsible for everything. Uh, I'm not, you know, Coach Mora and the team are responsible for what goes on on the field, but uh, we have a full operations staff, which, you know, which is responsible for what goes on off the field. Now I'm sort of more in the uh, behind the scenes, uh, working with the dome people, uh, security, uh, the um, ushers, ticket takers, uh, parking, and uh, just the general operations point. You know, most families like to watch the Saints game together, but the Romick family takes it a step further. They like to have their family reunions right here in the dome. Klingler's pass into the end zone incomplete. Credit the pressure to Ricky Jackson. Jay's dad, Jerry, has been the Saints' public address announcer for the last 25 years. 
His sister Mary Beth has been a spotter for her dad for the last couple of seasons. I used to spot for dad at Tulane Stadium. I was his, his spotter. So, uh, you know, I always, I love sports and I love the city and I, you know, I love the team. And it's always was a dream to work for the team, but it's, it's worked out great. I want to see us get to the Super Bowl. We both want to get there and, uh, and have him uh, announce that NFC Championship game here and have me do the operations for the championship game and have us go on someplace for the Super Bowl. That'd be the best. For the Jim Mora Show, I'm Jim Gallant. It's time to go away again, but when we return after these messages, we'll go back to the Grand Casino for more questions for the coach. When we come back, Ron and guests talk to the coach from the Grand Casino in Gulfport. You're looking at a Ram 1500 truck. There it is, folks, from Dodge Motor Trends Truck of the Year. And tonight, one of our lucky audience members will drive that truck home. That's right, we'll do that at the end of the show. Right now, we are back, and we're going back to the Grand Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi. Jim Gallagher's handling things out on the coast, and he's got more questions for Coach Jim Moore. Jim? Final, thanks a lot. Most of these people really want to know how they can get a shot at the truck also. Sir, what's your name? What's your question? Uh, my name is Tom Sawyer from Sylvie, Texas. My question for the coach is, the last uh, week or so I've been hearing the rumors he may be going back into college ranks. Is there any truth in that? Not that I know of. I don't, I don't plan on doing it. All right, Jim, the key thing, that is definitely his name, though. Tom Sawyer, he assures me of that. What's your name? What's your question, sir? My name is Howard Evans from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, question to the coach. Coach, I'd like to know, have you had any of your uh, assistant coaches on your staff had enough animosity and friction between them that they express their feelings on the sideline or in the um, dressing room? No, we, we, we don't. Are you, are you referring kind of to the incident that took place last night in the Houston uh, Jet game? You must be. I, I've never, I've never been around something like that. Never have. Jim, my question goes to free agency a little further down the line. I can ask you to look ahead. Uh, originally, when I talked to the guys in the NFL, when they were talking about the salary cap, the question I heard was, basically the figure I heard was about 30 to $32 million you guys would have to spend. Now we hear it's going to be about $38 million because of the, the new money that's coming in. Will that make your decisions any easier on some of these veteran free agents who may be making a lot of money, may have been a, some tough decisions down the road for you in free agency? Well, the more money you got to spend, the, the, the easier the decisions. But uh, we're still going to have some tough decisions because we're, uh, you know, we've got a pretty, pretty high payroll right now, and, and we're going to have to, to, to get back down to what the cap is going to be. We're over what the cap is going to be, so we're going to have to get back down. And, and we're going to have to, you know, to, to make some decisions regarding our own players and, and any new players that we, wa we might want to sign. But uh, again, I think the more money you got to spend, the, the easier that some of the decisions. Jim, thanks a lot. That wraps it up from our second shot here at the Grand Casino. We'll be back with the fans one more time for more questions for the coach. Lionel, back to you. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Some good questions from the fans in Gulfport tonight. And I think the fans in our studio audience have some questions as well. And we get them now in the Michael A. Bear armchair quarterback segment. Let's go to our first question right now. Hi, Coach. Billy Hember from Slidell. I'd like to know, has this been your toughest year as a football coach? Probably. Yeah, probably has been. Uh, uh, I, we, I, as a football coach, I've been very fortunate to be in some good programs, both at the college level and the professional level. And, and um, I, I really, have, most of the time, have been in, in programs where we've at least won as many as we've lost or won more. Now, we, we did that this year, but uh, it's still been a tough year. Hi, I'm Joey Gaspar from Kenner. Tyrone, how does it feel to make the Pro Bowl in your first NFL season? Uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, again, like I said, I mean, surprise, you know, because usually it goes on, uh, you know, if a guy's been there before, you know, uh, that's the ones who usually get picked for it. But uh, I'm, I'm very surprised. I think uh, the, guys, the guys blocking for me this year and the things I've done, uh, uh, I guess, showed other, other teams throughout the league, you know, what I can do, and uh, that's why I was selected. Hi, Coach. Kathy Constantine from Metairie. I'd like to know who's the player year in and year out that's meant the most to the football team this year? Uh, the one that's meant the most to the team this year? Uh, well, we've had a lot of guys that have, that have played good this year, and, and it's hard for me to, to really s signal out any one guy. You know, I, I, uh, 
you know, we've had some, some players that have been with the Saints now for a number of years. We, you know, Ricky and Hobie and, and, and Frank Warren and, and guys like that have been with the team, you know, 12, 13 years, and they've been great players for the Saints. And, uh, uh, but this year we've had a, a number of good, good performances, and it's, it, as I say, it's hard for me just to identify any one particular guy, but we've had a, a number. Hi, Coach. Eddie from Metairie. Um, regarding your offensive philosophy, I'd like to know, um, is it your own personal philosophy or is it based on the evaluation of the talent of players that you have? Well, I think you need to always be aware of the, the kind of players that you have and what will work best with what they do. So we, we, we try to adjust uh, what we, we do to, to the kind of players that we have. And any staff that I've ever been around in 34 years of coaching, that's been the best way to approach it and the most success we've had. Well, I'm Tom Schilling from Naples, Florida, Coach. Uh, do you see any possibility in the college draft and the free agency market for improving your quarterback situation? Well, um, I don't, I'm not really aware of the college draft at this point since we just finished the season yesterday, and uh, I haven't been studying the college draft. Now our personnel department has, Bill Q. Herrick and, and our scouts. Uh, in the free agent market, there's not a lot of, of uh, top quality quarterbacks available. And that doesn't answer your question directly, but, but um, there isn't in the free agent market. All right, good questions tonight. That's all the time we have. Uh, thank you, audience, for your support throughout the year. And now let's give away a new Benchcraft recliner from Michael A. Bear's Furniture. Uh, Tyrone Hughes, I'm going to ask you to take a name out of here. <laughs> you can read it and read the question, and uh, we'll give away the Benchcraft recliner. Uh, it's from George Pepe. Where's George? There he is, right in the front row. <laughs> yeah, what's the question? Uh, the question is, is there anything you would change now that you did not change during the season, such as quarterbacks or wide receivers changes, to help improve your, cha to help improve your chances of making the playoffs next year? Well, you know, as you look back, it's like anything. Hindsight is always better than foresight. And you can always go back and say, well, if I'd have done this or if I'd have done this or if we'd have want done this, it might have made a difference. And that, that's, that's easy. It's easy in our business. It's easy in anybody's business. It's a little, a little bit more difficult to do it at the time and because and, and, you can't foresee what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of things I'd like to have another chance at, a lot of decisions that, hey, if we could do it over again, we'd do it a little bit different. But, but that's been the case in every year that I've ever coached or a lot of things that I do. Hey, if I had another chance to do it, we'd do it a different way. I mean, I'm sure you would, too. All right. Congratulations. Enjoy the new Benchcraft recliner from Michael A. Bears Furniture. <laughs> we will take another break, but on the other side of it, we'll hear from a very famous professional wrestler. Those guys are never at a loss for words, and we'll do another casino thing, so don't go away. People are anxious, ready to win that Dodge Ram 1500 truck, and we'll do that at the end of the show, give it away. But first, another one of our features this year on the Jim Moore Show was What I Say. Throughout the season, we caught up and talked with TV stars, network announcers, professional baseball players. We even had a professional wrestler, Cactus Jack, give us his opinion on the Saints. Well, this week, we've got another one. Jim Gallagher talks with Ric Flair and two network announcers. <laughs> Saturday night at the Sugar Bowl, we caught up with a big, and I do mean big, Florida Gator fan, who also has a rooting interest in the Saints. Now with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, 11-time heavyweight champion. Rick, I know you're a Saints fan by proxy, I hear. Yeah, I'm a good friend of Brad Musters. I'm a big Saints fan. I love Jim Moore. I love this town. We're in New Orleans. We're cooking. The Gators are beating West Virginia. We're live. It's New Orleans. Woo! <laughs> Sunday at the Superdome, we ran into the NBC announcing crew of Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen, and we talked about the Saints' struggles over the past few weeks. The perception nationally is that everybody wonders what happened. 
You know, because with a 5-0 and start, and then everybody figured, you know, this is a playoff team, this is a possibility. Are they strong enough to go to the Super Bowl? I mean, that was the early talk, and then, as you know, since then, with the record of 2-8 and eight with all of the injuries, it's, I don't think, I don't think nationally that everybody really understands exactly the problems that the, the Saints have faced this year. Everybody points to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, you look over during Moore's tenure, and I don't know the number offhand, I'm sure it's been documented here in the local press, how many offensive players have been pro bowlers? That's the big question. They don't seem to have an impact player on the offensive side of the ball. Clearly their defense has been outstanding as well as their special teams, so I think that's the issue, but you know, people have to understand that that's easily rectified if they decide that they want to get into the free agent market because there are going to be a lot of very good players out there and they can get well in a hurry. Since Charlie and Todd pulled double duty this weekend, they didn't get a chance to meet with Jim Mora this game, but they've covered the team in the past and we spoke to both announcers about the head coach. As far as I'm concerned, judging by his record, he's a class act. He's always been very open with us. He's always, uh, you know, told us what to expect for us, some ideas, things to look for, not only with the opposing ball club, but also with the Saints. He has been just super cooperative, and, he's, and he should be, you know, because he's one of the nicest people in the world. Any funny stories, any, any kind of anecdotes you can relate about the coach? Uh, you know what, Jim Mora, Jim Mora reminds me of, you know, you know, they talk about those thin books, you know, Getting By on Talent Alone by Raquel Welch, you know, those sorts of things. His reminds me of that thick book on German humor. You know, it's about this, <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, I don't have any funny stories. Now, I will go so far as to say this, he, he's animated enough so if he did get in the personality contest with Landry and Bud Grant, Jim Mora would win. <laughs> Jim, uh, speaking of personalities, uh, do you have a different personality during the season and during the offseason? Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> can you go into that a little bit more? Well, I'm a little bit more relaxed during the right. offseason. There's not the, the pressure, the constant pressure and the constant stress, although the way offseasons are getting nowadays, I'm not so sure that that's going to be the case. You know, with this free agency and all this kind of stuff, it's like right. it's uh, almost like it's during the season. But... Uh, yeah, you know, it's that it's that day to day grind, that that week to week getting ready for a, a team and the and the pressure and the stress of that. And it's just it's it's just a little bit more relaxing during the off season. So right. yeah, it affects your personality, it affects how I am around my, my wife and uh, everybody. Even even you and Ron yeah. and around the media and fans. Right. I mean I guess you know that's that's the nature of the game though. Yeah, that's the nature of the game. That's what that's uh, you you understand this right. when you get into it and that's always been the case. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, it doesn't get any easier. And I was talking to Dick Vermeil. I can just sure. Dick Vermeil was in town to do the uh, Sugar Bowl, and uh, for ABC. And he's Dick and I have been really close friends for a long time. He came out to practice Saturday morning, and uh, he says all the coaches he talks to, and I agreed with him. It, it, the older you get and the longer you're in it, the harder it is, the, the tougher it is to lose, and the more it affects you and the whole thing. And I, I believe it. Uh, as a younger guy, you just kind of no big deal, but right. boy, it gets tougher. All right, we have time to go out to the Grand Casino one last time. Tonight, Jim Gallagher's there, and he's got some final questions for the coach from those Gulf Coast fans. Jim? Final thanks a lot. We definitely have one more question for the coach. Sir, what's your name? What's your question? Prentice Nobles from Laurel, Mississippi. I want to ask the coach uh, what positions he'll be looking for in the upcoming draft. You know, I don't know yet uh, because I don't know, uh, you know, really much about the draft, and, and, we, and, and it's going to kind of depend upon how we get through this, these next couple months in free agency and who's still with us and who isn't with us and who maybe we've signed in the free agency market. I think some, a lot of these things are going to affect the draft where they haven't in the past. So uh, I'll give you a better uh, idea of that as we get closer to the draft, which is not until the end of April. Jim, my question kind of follows up, though, on the draft question. Talking to a couple of your assistant coaches before the game, they were saying that it uh, looked like a possibility of your staff coaching in the Senior Bowl. What's the update on that, and are you happy to be coaching in the Senior Bowl, or would you rather be going over there and just scouting? Jim, this year there's a new policy as to which staff gets selected to coach the Senior Bowl. It's the team that didn't make the playoffs that was next in line to make the playoffs. In the AFC, that's already been decided. That's the Miami Dolphins and they were nine and six and didn't make the playoffs and and it'll depend upon who wins tonight if the 49ers beat the eagles we will coach one of the teams okay. if the if the 49ers lose to the eagles and the eagles would have the same record of us and and beat us in a head-to-head -head, so they would be the team i i hope we get to coach it i think it'll give us a better feeling of the talent that's over there plus i i just would look forward to the experience we've done it twice since we've been here and i think it'd be good to do it again 
Found some good guys, including your guest tonight, Tyrone Hughes, there last year. You bet. Jim, from all of us here at the Grand Casino, we want to thank everybody for the cooperation here at the Grand. It's been a great year over here live at the Grand Casino with all the fan questions. Thanks again. Wrapping it up for the final time here from the Grand, I'm Jim Gallagher. Lionel, back to you. All right, Jim. Thank you very much. Now, if you registered for the Saints Away tailgate party, the moment you've been waiting for is coming up next. We will give away the grand prize, the brand new Dodge Ram 1500 truck. We'll do it right after this break. Coming up next on the Jim Warner Show, a musical look at 1993, Saint style. That's next. All right, welcome back to the Jim Morris Show. All season long, WVUE Sports, Saints Digest, and your local Dodge dealers have promoted our Dodge Ram truck giveaway. Of the thousands of people who entered this competition, 75 names were drawn. Those contestants are in our studio tonight wearing the red shirts. One fan will get the keys and drive home with this brand new Dodge Ram 1500 truck right here behind me. What we'll do now is give away Motor Trends Truck of the Year. Coach, you'll do the honors. Tyrone Hughes will spin it. Already, sp yeah, spin it one more time, Tyrone, just to make sure we get it all mixed up. All right, Jim, you'll uh, read the name of the winner. Get ready. Reach deep. This is it. The winner is Jerry Rossi. Jerry Rossi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 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 congratations. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, what do you think of this, uh, this truck back here? Talk. What's that? This is my husband's Christmas present. I can talk, I'm glad. <laughs> I can use it. <laughs> it's his Christmas Thank the good Lord. And just great. Thank <laughs> Dodge dealers. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's about a $20,000 Christmas present, yeah, Jerry. That's you. wonderful. Uh, Jerry Novelli from uh, Chrysler, a sales manager. We'll give you the keys to this beautiful new truck well, right now. I've got the keys here somewhere. Let me oh, see if I've got it. Here we are. There it is. Well, on behalf of the Dodge dealers, Jerry, of the greater New Orleans area, we are proud to be able to support the Saints this season, and we wish you many, many happy motoring miles and many, many happy tailgate parties in your new tough, ramp tough Dodge truck. Thank you. You're shaking. <laughs> I think I may have a heart attack. Thank you. That's Thank great. you. Bud. Thank you. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Well, that's all right. We thank you for coming out. Congratulations. All right, why don't you, uh, why don't you go over there and get in the truck and let's see. Uh, come on, you can do it. She's so happy. She's shaking. This is a beautiful truck. Why don't you? Yeah, you can start it up. Just don't drive it through, though. There's not enough room. All right, let's see if the things start. There it is. I'll tell you, what a happy moment. What a great moment. The horn works, yep. Jerry Rossi, Jim, that uh, wonderful thing to give away a That's truck great. like this. That's fantastic. She's very happy, sincere happiness. That's great. Good to see you're so excited. You know, we want to thank Dodge for, uh, for giving away this truck. All right. That brings us to a close of our fourth season of the Jim Moore Show on WVUE. Jim, uh, thanks for uh, being with us again this it's year. It's been fun. It's been a pleasure. I All wish right. the record would have been better, but uh, I've enjoyed doing the show. All right. We'll see what happens. Uh, thanks to everyone who worked on the show, and believe me, it took some work. We also want to thank you for watching. Thanks to the studio audience. We leave you tonight with a look back at the season through the camera of sports photographer Dave Beatty and the production of Channel 8's Mr. Everything, Brian Grenroot. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for Monday Night Football next. Good night, everybody. dream of making a million dollars. I always dream of making a million dollars. Now I make a little more than that. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, well, I'd buy you a house. I would buy you a house. With a
the signing of Wade will not be bringing Bobby Bear back. Bobby will not be offered a contract. With the uh, choice obtained from Detroit, the New Orleans Sa Saints select uh, Willie Rowe. They're throwing different things at you every day at, at different times, so it's just uh, very confusing right now, but I just got to do the best I can. Once I learn what I'm doing, I think I'll be right up there with the rest. Doctors treating Jim Finks have confirmed that the Saints president and general manager is suffering from a form of cancer. There he is. Don't take a check from him. This check ain't no good. <laughs> Monster. <laughs> 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 I saw people in the stands stand up and applaud yeah. when Wade Wilson first hit the ground. And Al Ball, you got your VCRs running because you are classless pigs. I thought it was horrible, disgusting, embarrassing, shameful. It stuck. People are sick when they do something like that. Absolutely friggin' sick.
The Jim Morris Show has been a presentation of WVUE Sports. Our Large.